So I'm here in New York to take a look at one of the most historical documents on the planet. An original Declaration of Independence broadside. There's probably only 20 left, and I'm about to take a look at one right now. This is an extremely rare July 1776 printing of the Declaration of Independence. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my career. So how much are you looking for this? This was displayed at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. It's an exceptional condition. It's extremely scarce. Two million good day folks today we will show you all the moments when the pawn stars made the biggest profits in history oh this is your guitar yes okay it's a 1961 fender stratocaster that's a big wow factor right there this guitar has been with me for years i actually worked a little bit with the beatles it does it does have quite a good history it's got a hell of a history on it yeah, yeah. i worked on james bond actually played the james bond theme you you played the james bond theme yes you know this guy yeah it's right, right. Yeah. honor to meet you honor well to meet you. so what do you think it's worth probably be about a thirty-five thousand dollar guitar on its own i could see this going to a collector at auction easily sixty seventy thousand dollars this is cool this is like beyond cool 1800s legal tender and treasury note. Unique and historical banknotes are a fast-selling item in the gold and silver pawn shop. That's the main reason why Jeff showed Rick what he has to offer. Hey, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. I have a $50 legal tender note from 1880, and I have an 1890 legal tender treasury note, which is also known as an ornate or a fancy back. Okay, these are cool, and they're pretty damn rare. He was pretty confident to get a huge amount for his 1800s legal tender and treasury note. Rick knows that these two paper bills are rare, and he didn't hesitate to call the expert to get a check out, especially with the price Jeff had put in the bills, which was a whopping $35,000. How much were you looking to get out of it? $35,000. Okay. $18,000 for the ornate back, $17,000 for the $50 note. Let me call on someone to look at them, and we'll go from there. That's fair. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. When the expert came in right off the bat, he knew that these banknotes are two fantastic pieces. Wow. This is why I call you in when I have this weird stuff. Great well, paper money. These are two very fantastic items. I could tell right off the bat. This was in 1890. $20 legal tender. This series is far better and more valuable and rarer than the 1891. $50, surprisingly, even though it is a higher denomination note, it is actually more common than this note. Doesn't mean it's worth less or more, it just means it's more common. With its rarity and history, he's certain that Rick will be able to make a huge profit out of it. When Rick asked for his appraisal of the bills, he told him and Jeff that it could go between $22,000 and $30,000. Rick, what are your questions you have with this? It's the same I have with all this old paper money. You know, I need to know what grade it is. And and, you know, what's it worth? These look to be in fantastic condition, actually. It does have a corner fold, so this $50 is quite nice, um, but it does look like something fuzzy was up here. So what are they worth? The $20 treasury note, I would expect in auction to bring between twelve and 16000 and the 1880 $50 legal tender note, I would expect to bring between ten and 15000 They agreed with the amount of $22,000, and in Rick's words, it is indeed a sweet deal. What's your best price on them? I'd like to get 30000 for the two of them. Take them worth seventeen. <sighs> I, th I think you can get the thirty four. Um, 25. I'll pay you at the bottom end of what Pete said. 22, I think I'm, I think I'll do all right. Fine, you got a deal. Sweet. Meet you right over there and we'll do some paperwork, man. Declaration of Independence broadside. Without a doubt, the Declaration of Independence ranks as history's most important historical event. Only 20 copies of the original Declaration broadside are still in existence, so Rick flew to New York to try to negotiate a deal with Jeremy. So I'm here in New York to take a look at one of the most historical documents on the planet. An original Declaration of Independence broadside. There's probably only 20 left, and I'm about to take a look at one right now. Jeremy? Hey, Rick. Yep. I'm here for the broadside. Come on in. It's the coolest thing he'd ever seen in his life, according to Rick. There it is. Definitely a wow moment. A wow um, moment, right. This is an extremely rare July 1776 printing of the Declaration of Independence. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my career. So yeah, this is just incredible. This was right after the 4th of July. I imagine your local tavern when this was first penned up, there was a lot of people standing around going, damn. As far as documents go, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my career. It's worth a million bucks to Jeremy. So how much are you looking for this? This was displayed at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. It's an Exceptional condition. It's extremely scarce. Two million. Okay. Because Rick had to have it checked out by an expert, they agreed to a price of $1,450,000 after the expert said everything was genuine. I just want a document expert to look at it. Sure. I, I have one coming down. Best document guy in New York. So here we go. Yeah, I am 
thrilled to see this. I normally would have to take this out of the frame to authenticate it, but I've actually seen this exact copy before. People think of the Declaration of Independence as the signed copy, but that was actually done a month later, really as a souvenir. The word had to get out by these printed documents, and this copy actually was posted on a wall. All right, so, so I mean, it's 100% legit. Absolutely. I think this could go for $2 million at auction now. That's it. It's sold. A Declaration of independence was legally possessed by Rick. I would love to give you like $1.4 million. Um, I would sell it to you for $1.5 million. Uh, I'll meet you in the middle. $1.45, I, I think that's fair. I, I think we can both be happy with that. You know, I think, uh, I think we got a deal. Oh my goodness, I own the Declaration of Independence. Vic Flick's 1961 Fender Stratocaster. Vic Flick is a skilled studio musician who has contributed to some of the most well-known bands and songs in music history, despite the fact that the majority of you may have never heard of him. Vic Flick visited the Pawn Store holding his Fender Stratocaster guitar for appraisal in one Pawn Stars episode. Hey, Rick, I have a guitar for you. Okay. Oh, this is your guitar? Yes. Okay. It's a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> That's a big wow factor right there. A number of well-known musicians, including Tom Jones, Eric Clapton, The Beatles, Nancy Sinatra, and others have played with him on guitar. It's in pretty damn good shape. So where did you get this thing? This guitar's been with me for years. I've worked on records with Nancy Sinatra and Petula Clark, Tom Jones, it's not unusual. So were you like a studio mus musician? I was, I was, from 1958 till about 1983. I actually worked a little bit with The Beatles. It does, it does have quite a good history. It's got a hell of a history on it. Yeah. yeah. Vic plays the iconic James Bond theme that appears in every 007 film on this very guitar, so it's easy to see why Rick was eager to strike a deal with her. So you worked on films too? I worked on films. I worked on Goldfinger, James Bond. Actually played the James Bond theme. You, you played the James Bond theme? Yes. Of all the movie themes, that would probably be the most recognizable one, period. A 1961 Fender Strat is worth five digits at least, and one that actually played on big movie scores could be worth worth 10 times that amount. After consulting with guitar expert Jesse Amoroso, the price of the stunning Fender Stratocaster was set at $55,000. How much are you looking to get out of it? $70,000. Ooh, um, I'm gonna call someone up who knows everything about guitar, knows everything in the world about music. I'm just basically gonna ask him, does your name make it worth that much? Oh, I see. You know this guy? Yeah, that's right. yeah. honor to meet you, honor well, to meet you. So what do you think it's worth? Probably be about a $35,000 guitar on its own. You've heard this guitar probably more times than you even realize, this particular Guitar. Probably true, yeah. I could see this going to a collector at auction, easily sixty, seventy thousand dollars This is cool. This is like beyond cool. All right. Um, we take 50 grand for it. Do you go 60? I will go $55,000. I think that's a fair price. I take all the risks. All right. Deal. Yeah. Okay. Let's go do some paperwork. Spanish fleet gold coin. Gold is where all the flash and glamour are, right? A Spanish ship sailing from Cuba to Spain in 1715 with millions of dollars worth of gold and silver was attacked by a hurricane. The storm caused significant damage to the ship, which sank to the bottom of the sea. I'd like to sell this gold coin if I could. Okay. This is a Spanish stamp here. This is like the royal crest of Spain. I'm going into the pawn shop today to see if I can sell my gold coin. It's in really good shape. It looks really old and I don't really have any use for it, so I'm gonna see what they can do for me here. Jody received one of the discovered coins from a family member. So where did you get this? I got that from my grandfather when he died. Uh, he left a safe full of contents. Any other cool things in the safe? Not really, no. He knew what it was, but he had no idea what it was worth, and he was expecting to sell it for about $2,000. What were you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get 2,000 if I could. Okay, this coin is in really great shape. It's almost too good to be true. Rick asked a professional to assist him validate the coin because he was skeptical about its validity. There's a lot of fakes out there. So I'd really like someone to take a look at it. I had a few concerns, so I called in my buddy Carl to take a look. He was shocked when the expert confirmed that the coin was real and worth $18,000. Hey, Carl, how's it going? Good to see you, Rick. Did you throw that on the scale? Yeah, I did. It's 27.0 grams. That is right on. Very rarely will they be right on 27 grams. Most castings are underweight. From everything I can see on this one, I'd say it's absolutely genuine. Okay. So what do you think this is worth? I would put a price tag of 18000 on it. Okay. Jody and Rick were able to come to an arrangement, and Jody walked away happy and carrying 11000 in his wallet. Okay, so the big question is, what do you want for it? Sounds like 18000 to me. No, I don't. 
Why would we give you 10 grand for it? How about 12? How about 10, five? I wouldn't take anything less than 11,000. So 11,000. 11,000. Okay. Got a All deal. Right. Thank All you. Right. Book of Mormon. A thing doesn't necessarily need to be made of expensive materials to be valuable. Adam knew he had an old book that could be worth a few bucks when he brought it into the store, but he had no idea how special it was. Hey, it's you again. What do you got? Brought for you a book, the Book of Mormon. Is it the play or the book? <laughs> it's definitely the book. It's even harder to get this than tickets to the play. The final edition printed while the founder of the faith, Joseph Smith, was still alive was the leather-bound edition, which was published in 1842. This is a version that was printed actually in 1842. This one wasn't printed in many copies, maybe 600 something copies. I was gonna ask something on the order of like $25,000 for it. Damn. Everyone knew it was precious, so the Harrisons asked Rebecca Romney, a specialist in the subject, to provide a precise estimate. The Book of Mormon. Wow, this is actually really hard to find. The Book of Mormon is hugely important in American history because this is America's most successful homegrown religion, and this is the key text for that religion. They were shocked to hear that the small volume was worth $40,000. Rick, this is by far the most valuable book you've ever had me appraise. For a lot of books, later editions don't hold a ton of value because they're not the first. But these early editions of the Book of Mormon will still hold a lot of collectible value because of all of that history. I would appraise this book actually at about $40,000. Oh. With Rick negotiating a deal for $24,000, which is a significant markup for all parties involved, especially given the replicas of the item sell for just a few hundred dollars each, both Adam and Rick made a handsome profit. Realistically, what's your best price? I think $25,000 was really fair. So you take 23. I really think it's a $40,000 book. You'll sell it. There's a lot of demand for it. Can you give me a little and just let me do 24,000? Uh, you gave me an extra thousand last time. This time I'll give it to you, so we'll do okay. it that way. It's a deal. It might be time to give your bookcase another look. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.